But I was watching one episode and it was like the full frontal nudity of a man. And Jason was like, come on, come on, man. <laughs> I said, you're not saying all this with the butt naked women running around. <laughs> you quiet over there <laughs> looking at them. <laughs> hey, what's up, y'all? It's Sid the Entertainer. I'm, I'm asking y'all to check out the Loveology podcast. This is. Hello, and welcome to the Loveology podcast, where we talk about love and life with laughter. I'm Ashley. And I'm Jason. He's the carefree one. She's the serious one. And, and we're, we're married. married. We have been since 2012, and we like to think of ourselves as a couple of loveologists. Not because we are the experts, but because we just love love. We enjoy studying and talking about it, so we thought, let's just start a podcast. A place where we can share what we have learned about love, relationships, and marriage. You can share what you've learned, and we can all grow together. So here we are. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hey, welcome everybody to another episode of the the, the, blah, 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 oh. of the Loveology <laughs> podcast. We're gonna keep it rolling. We're gonna take no cuts out of that for nah, us. Yeah, right, I keep saying it. Ain't nobody perfect. Let's roll with it. Right. Let's keep rolling with it. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, babe? Hey. How you doing? I'm good. You good? Mm-hmm. You looking good? Thank you, honey. So are you? Oh man, you know I always keep up my. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Keep up, keep my shelf up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh. Man, it's been a, a, a wild and crazy week. You you ready for another week? Man, I'm always ready. Always ready? Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> well, we're going to jump into how y'all doing out there, man. Again, appreciate y'all, man. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And if you don't like what you hear, you know what I'm saying? It's all good. Hit that thumbs down. But give us some feedback. Let us know why you dislike we can improve we all can improve we're always evolving right that's right and in order to evolve you got to know that you you know probably doing something wrong yes right mm-hmm. so we appreciate y'all feedback good or bad shoot us a comment that helps with the uh youtube algorithms and all that right that's right all right man let's get this show started we on another uh we're still in the same series of love and respect that's right if you haven't been listening to the past how many what which episode is this the, this third the fourth one, one. the fourth this one is part four okay so the past three episodes go check out love and respect part one part two and part three yep okay and right there <laughs> hit that button um because you may you know you would just enjoy this episode better if you check those out first cool right yep okay so today we are going to talk about um, the PLE of the acronym that this author came up with. It was called um, an acronym and it's couple. Mm-hmm. So we've talked about the C, the O, the U. Okay. And now we're about to talk the, talk about the PLE. PLE. Oh, let's go. <laughs> so this is mainly for the fellas, but of course, ladies, you know, you may actually, you know, enjoy listening to this too. I, I enjoy reading this chapter, you know, just because for the guys doesn't mean that you can't listen. But fellas this is some great advice for you this is geared toward you right yes so just a little recap um love and respect is about uh basically a man loving his wife Mm -hmm. and a woman showing respect for her husband and keeping that cycle going because if a woman feels unloved she's going to be disrespectful Mm -hmm. and if a man feels disrespected he's gonna um start acting unloving Mm -hmm. so that's called the crazy cycle so right now uh we're talking about the energizing cycle yes and uh, this couple acronym is to teach men how they can love their wives talk to me okay talk to me talk to me talk to me baby (laughs) okay (laughs) so briefly the the cou part of this was closeness openness and understanding so Today, we're talking about peacemaking, loyalty, and esteem. Hey. And next week, don't worry, fellas. We haven't forgotten about you. Oh, yeah. Next, the next two weeks, we will talk about chairs, which is uh, stands for conquest, hierarchy, <laughs> authority, insight, relationship, and sexuality. These are the things that the women need to do to um, respect and show love. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. For our hubbies. Yes. And I said that it should have been sh- chair, s- chairs, <laughs> with the S in front of it. Because that's how important sexuality is. Oh, God. 
for us. Okay. So we'll get to that in the next two weeks. You'll have your time to say whatever it is that you want to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Peacemaking. Blessed are the peacemakers. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, Keep the coming peace. up in here just causing all sorts of trouble. All that Getting ruckus. off work and just acting crazy. Going talking crazy. all crazy. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Basically. <laughs> Did I used to do that? Not sometimes, really. sometimes go on keep it 100 sometimes i come in here a little upset come in fussing yeah i mean i guess so yes no yeah. you're actually the fusser he's the fusser in our relationship <laughs> most of the time it's women but no you're the fusser oh what do you mean like a fusser you fuss more than i fuss i don't i don't want to call it fussing i just <laughs> i just point out and things. my nickname used to be fussy so that's really something if if my nickname used to be fussy and you, I feel like you fuss more than me. Then you must really fuss. <laughs> you fussing like that? <laughs> Not anymore. But there was a time period where you just <laughs> <laughs> calm down. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> ain't no telling. You know, it's, it's all about the IODB holder. I don't. I don't. Maybe, maybe, maybe so. Yeah. So basically, this is about the fact that in every relationship, even in very good relationships, there will always be some conflict. Yes. Right. And this is about how you handle the conflict. Right. Mm-hmm. You want to be a peacemaker. Um, he here's a quote from the book. Sparks can cause a controllable fire that heats the house and makes things warm and comfortable. Or sparks can set a wildfire that burns the house down. Mm. All married couples must realize that the sparks are going to be there. Sparks flying regardless. But you control whether or not it turns into an uncontrollable wildfire or some healthy tension. Yeah, make you want to do you know a little makeup. Yeah, you know what? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So you know, sometimes conflict calls like a little healthy tension. Yeah. And at the end of the day, conflict is just pointing out something that you all just need to talk about and get a deeper understanding for each other. If right. that's your goal, and we talked a lot about this in um, an episode called "Fighting Without Fighting," mm-hmm. um, how to fight, basically how to fight fairly, and what. What should be in your mind when you're going through a conflict? And yeah. basically is you and you and me versus the problem. Correct. And just having this attitude of I want to gain a deeper understanding of my partner and really understand why we're having this conflict right now. Right. And solve that problem. Right. Not bash you. And if you want to check out that episode, it is the audio version. So mm-hmm. it was before we did YouTube, but it's right here. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> um so he says, don't refuse to make peace by running from conflict with your um, spouse. Conflict is not a sign that you have a bad marriage. I think, do you think men or women have a harder time with conflict? <sighs> of course, we're speaking in general generalizations, but in, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm just going to go off because of, I'm a man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to think that women have more of an issue with conflict I'm not sure mm-hmm. because i think men can kind of roll with the punches a little bit better obviously that's not a blanket thing i just kind of generalizing just off of how i see myself and i see other men in different workplaces and stuff like that yeah i think men can handle it a little bit better i just i just well i mean like this idea of like actually talking about it cuz i know a lot of talking guys, about it yeah uh i don't think men talk about it we i think we have a little bit more of a barrier when it comes to communicating how we feel yeah you know what so I'm saying? you would shut down yeah. quicker than a woman would. yeah and i, I think, think that's, that's and i think that's why we roll with so much because it's like we just mm, we just shut down and just keep it moving mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying but as far as communicating about it nah mm-hmm. women communicate with through conflict better than men mm-hmm. yeah so Basically, like what I just unless read. we got a game plan, mm-hmm. we'll go for it. Like what I just read um, was basically saying, you know, don't run away from conflict. Like some people just don't like to argue, you know. And right. it's it's you. It's important if something is wrong, you need to get to the bottom of it. And so it may be cause a little situation, a little disagreement, but you can't run for those from right. those disagreements. You just gotta, you know, get to the bottom of it. Right. Right. So um, he gave some examples about like some husband saying that basically their wives will pull up. He, one husband called his wife historical and he's like, are, do historical. You, 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> he said, you calling me old? <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about the fact that she can like remember everything and pull everything back up, right? Oh, okay. But sometimes this happens when we never got to the bottom of the issue. Mm. So, yes, you should not keep pulling things back, you know, um, issues from the past, right? But if the person that is bringing those things up constantly, they're probably doing that either because they haven't learned to let it go mm-hmm. or it could be it's not that, resolved. that, yes, you did not take the time as a couple to resolve it. Mm. You just want them to, oh, that's in the past. But no, that hurt my feelings. We need to talk about this. Right. We need to like... You know, I need you to understand how that made me feel, not just, you know. Uh, and, it's, and it's really important to resolve it because it can pop back up. Exactly. So. Yeah. So I think that, you know, I do think that some people do struggle with bringing up stuff that we are done and over, you know, it is over with, but you just yeah. keep bringing it up. Yeah. That's not cool. But the other, like I said, the other option is that you didn't resolve it right right and they're bringing it up now because last time you walked away and didn't want to talk about it well it still hurt Mm -hmm. and we didn't talk about it so now i'm gonna bring it up on top of everything else right but like like i said in that fighting without fighting episode this is one of the things that people say um experts say that you definitely don't want to do during an argument it's just bringing up old stuff right all the time so so, yeah. So the next thing about peacemaking is saying that you're sorry. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, yeah. And really meaning it, too. Yes, absolutely. Because we can definitely tell when you don't mean it. Right. <laughs> we did another episode called That's Not a Real Apology. Mm-hmm. Check that out, because appa- apparently there's different apology languages. I don't remember that episode. You don't remember the episode? That's not a real apology. <laughs> well, I'm going to find it. If it's there, if it's, it, it, <laughs> you can it check is. it out. <laughs> but we talked about how sometimes like people want to hear different things that makes them feel like you actually apologize to them. So some people want to hear you say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Right, right, right. I do remember that, but I just don't remember the title. The title. <laughs> that's not a real apology. I think so. Okay. That's... <laughs> we'll we'll see. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah. And, and, and so this is kind of one of those situations where, I mean, you just definitely need to express um, that you're sorry. And I, during that episode, I realized that, yes, I want you to make it up to me. Mm-hmm. I want I want you to do something. Right? right. And then I also want to feel like you feel bad yeah. for what you did. Right. Like, that's important to me. Right. If you don't feel bad and you're just saying you're sorry, I'm just like, that don't, that, that don't even count. You're right. just saying I'm sorry, but that doesn't count. <laughs> 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 because I don't feel like you really feel it. So I don't do feel it like. Yes, figure it out, you know? Check that episode out, right? Because that is a big deal cuz another person can really be saying I'm sorry, but your partner is not feeling it because you didn't say can you forgive me. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Like that's important to someone, some people. Right. And that's not important to me because to me I'm sorry is wrapped up in that Mm -hmm. but that you know i understand how someone else would want to hear the words can you forgive me Mm -hmm. i get it okay yeah what do you think so far so far like i'm like going fast no no you good just keep it rolling baby okay (laughs) um oh here's a big one okay if you say you sorry don't say it just so the other person can say it do you think you do that like you actually don't mean it. You just waiting on, you just saying you're sorry just to hear the other person say that they're sorry. So like, okay, here's an example. <laughs> if you and I get into a disagreement and you really feel like I was wrong, but you can see that you were wrong, you were wrong too. Yeah. Right. And you apologize, but I don't apologize. I apologize, but then you don't apologize. Would you get upset? Well, yeah, because you got something that you need to apologize for. But what if I'm not there yet? Well, you need to get there. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's two different things. You know what I'm saying? You got my thing where I did you wrong Mm -hmm. for something I did. All right. But then you got another charge. You know, I did my charge. I I apologize for my charge. That's resolved. But then we still got to go to court about your charge. Well, you just deal with yourself and let me deal with me. 
I get that, but I'm still gonna be <laughs> upset. I'm still you still wronged me. I still want to hear an apology. Well, this is the way he what says you it. Did. He says one more thing about confessing. Your motive should never be to confess, so she will admit she was wrong too. But often that is exactly what happens. No. So I think he's saying your motive. Like yeah. if your only if your only motive is to get her to apologize, but you actually don't think you did anything wrong. You just like I don't I want to squash this and let me apologize because she needs to apologize to me. Well, that goes back to the previous thing of don't say you sorry if you don't mean it. Mm-hmm. Cause that's basically what you're doing. You you saying sorry and you don't really mean it. You're doing it because you want them to say sorry. Same thing. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Okay. So, so to answer your question, you need to cough up. I'm sorry too, because <laughs> you did some wrong. Okay. Are you gonna take back your apology if I refuse to apologize? We already resolved in the court of law. Okay. Or the court of love, I should say. But you can't say, "Well, I apologize to you, so you need to apologize to me." I didn't say that. All I'm saying is. I had an issue. I had done something wrong. So let me apologize for what I did. Right. Mm -hmm. But in this whole big uh, confusion that we just, we had, you made an offense too. Mm -hmm. You hurt me too. You need to apologize for what you hurt on your, on on your infraction. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's two separate things. Okay. So are we not going to move on unless I apologize? I mean, I mean, I'm going to address how I feel. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you need to know that, yeah, I'm hurt by this. Mm -hmm. And if you are not uh, understanding enough, understanding enough or sensitive enough to see that this hurt me and how you could possibly be in the wrong from this pain that I'm feeling, then I don't know. It's kind of hard for me to move on from that. (laughs) I understand. I'm just being devil's advocate here. Okay. I'm a, I'm in agreement with you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so here's a list. You see my eye. My eye going like, well, what's wrong with this girl? You <laughs> <laughs> thought I was for real. Like, well, you better get this nah, fundamental stuff together. I'm just saying, if <laughs> if someone else may feel that way, because I'm sure there are people out there that feel that way. Okay. So. I'm just saying, you that's fundamentals. <laughs> better hold that football two hand. Oh my gosh. Girl. Okay, here's a quick list you guys of f- quick list fellas of ways that you can um that your woman can feel at peace with you, okay? Mm-hmm. You let her vent her frustrations and hurts and don't get angry and close her off. You admit you are wrong and apologize for saying I'm sorry or by saying I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? You understand her natural desire to negotiate, compromise and defer and you meet her halfway. Basically, this whole like not walking away during a conflict, yeah. unless like like I said, unless it's it get getting heated. too heated. But you can say, "Babe, listen, I think it's getting too heated. I think that we should just. I want to have this conversation with you, but I want to do it when we have calmed down. Okay, yeah. so I think we should take a break and we can come back to the conversation. I think she'll be okay with that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Jason does me like that all the time. What? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if if we get in a little too heated, you you explain to me that okay, I I think we should take a break and we can come back to it. Yeah, I, I think what's helped me um here here lately, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying with with that, which I don't think we had in a, our argument or anything in a in a little minute, a yeah, disagreement. Uh-huh. But you know, um, meditation, you know what I'm saying, meditation does help because for me, it helps you know keep me centered. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. So when you meditate. It's like you, nothing on the outside should really deter you a little bit. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It's it's harder for outside interference to bother you. Mm-hmm. So when we having a, let's say you can feel elevated, like the other day, you was feeling a little elevated. I said, baby, you okay? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's getting on my last nerves. I didn't even say, I didn't even do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, yes, you did. I was like, baby, you okay? And she, I was outside and I come in just everything you know what I'm saying like okay I see some something's going on here let me I just need I just I just all right love let's let's get it let's get knock it out yes you did a good job I thank you yeah yeah Mm -hmm. and I owe that to to meditating good you know what I'm saying so try that look up some 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 videos on meditation matter of fact I'll pop one up there for you 
(laughs) (laughs) Him and his pops. Okay. You try to keep your relationship up to date, resolving the unresolved and and never saying forget it. So back to what we were saying, up to date being you're not letting all these things just go by, right? Mm -hmm. All these problems, because like we said, if something keeps coming back, a good, there is a good uh, possibility that it's because you haven't resolved it yet. Mm-hmm. No, they're not going to let it go. If you haven't talked about it yet, right. no, she's not going to let it go. Right. It's still hurting her. We need to get to the bottom of this, right? right. So, yes, it's going to keep coming up. And it's hurting her even more and more because you're just going on like ain't nothing happening. Nothing, yeah, forget it. No, I can't forget it. We got we got to deal with this, right? Right. right. So, you know, um, so like you said, up to date. I like that phrase. Mm-hmm. Like the only argument that me and Jason, if we ha- if we get into a disagreement, we get into a disagreement about what, like something that just happened, right? Not like all this other stuff that was like five years ago, but because we actually resolved that, right? Right. right. So yeah, and it's, I mean it's just like a, a wound, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's just like a cut, you know what I'm saying? You cut somebody deep enough, you who 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 sliced, you know, did the cutting, you probably don't know how deep it it hurt how much she's bleeding on the inside or how how painful that wound is all you did was make the cut but when you make that cut if you don't properly clean the wound care for it uh it can it can go into something even nastier you know what i'm saying and and, it, and it's, it's gonna hurt more and more and more any little thing can make it hurt you know mm-hmm. so you can you make it heal by uh just simply just patting it together oh, and, wait. and just this is a little side <laughs> <laughs> just by patting it together and, and wrapping it around yeah you can you can heal it that way as well but what do you want to heal it with you know uh you know stitches you know what i'm saying something that's gonna make it heal with it and it may not even you might not even see a scar mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so it's like which one would you rather do right you know mm-hmm. if you just it's levels to it yes you know mm-hmm. not heal it heal it by just a little bit of here and there or going a deep dive and just really taking your time and really hearing healing it where there is no scar and therefore there's not much to remember off of that situation you can truly love and forget about it right absolutely uh you forgive her of any wrongs she confesses you never nurse bitterness and always reassure her of your love you pray with her and with her after a hurtful time Mm-hmm. I think that'll work for me. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now we're moving on to the that's L. A, that's a dope apology. Boy, you apologize and pray pray about it? Jesus. <laughs> um, loyalty. Oh, yes. We need some loyalty. And not just like, so, well, we'll get into it, but basically, like, not just, of course, the nun cheating, right? loyalty that way but also just loyalty to me and commitment to me mm-hmm. in like every way right yeah so you know if i lose all my hair are you gonna leave me mm-hmm. you know what i mean right you committed Commit. love me yeah <laughs> lick, lick that ball here oh my god <laughs> <laughs> So, Jason, you've actually never joked with me like this, but the author gives an example of, um, you know, sometimes people will say, guys will say, what's the matter? Afraid I'll trade you in for a new model or, you know, I plan to keep you around at least for a while. You know, joking like that. Yeah, that's in the, that's like in the that's in the realm of playing around with divorce. Right. The word, I don't, why? Yeah. Why even bring that in? Yes. You know what I'm saying? There's something else that he said in here, too. Yeah. But, yeah, Jason has never joked with me like that. And I don't joke with you. Like, I'm going to get somebody else. You keep playing. I'm going right. to kick you to the curve. Like, right. that's not. No. Uh, we don't play like that. No, nah, for actually. what? Yeah. So, I do know that some men, like, actually don't mean any harm. They just think it's funny. Right. You know, but this author was like, I guarantee you it's not funny to your wife. No, it's, it, not, it's not a joke matter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just like. If you want your house smelling fresh, mm-hmm. you know, and and you, why would you even bring a skunk in here? It's like, well, no, you you know, you could bring a skunk in. It's not gonna, people don't see it. As it's skunk. not going to spray. Is 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 only spray when it feels threatened. This skunk is trained. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No. Why yeah. even bring it in the house? Yeah, but like I said, people, you if you can identify something, it's hard sometimes when you don't identify something for what it is and. 
for some people, they just think, oh, you're being sensitive. It's just a joke. But that's just not a good joke. But some people really don't see it that way. Yeah. This the, Whoever this man, like, I don't, I really do think that his husband's out there that's just really joking. And they don't, they don't, they're not actually thinking this. You know, oh, yeah. I'm going to trade you in for another model or something. I'm trading you in for somebody else. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, maybe some some of them do say it in a very hurtful way. But I think that there are some that just really think it's a joke and, and they don't see anything wrong with it. So, yeah. nah, it's not a joke. Not a good one at all. <laughs> Take that back. You'll get tomatoes thrown at you. <laughs> you come with that joke, you're going to get a little. <laughs> get out of here. Get out of here, you. <laughs> just bring the Sandman out. Yeah. And so, you know, he's like a lot of times men who have that kid like that or joke like that when they, their wife need a little reassurance. And they'll come and say, hey, you know, do you love me? When we ask, I ask you that question sometimes. And it's so funny to like read a book and see yourself, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that, oh, yeah, I do. I do do that. I just ask Jason out of the blue. Do you love me? Yeah. Why? <laughs> but Jason, no, you don't do that. What? Do you love me? Ask me. Do you love me? No, nah, because I see it. Yes. Yeah. But for some reason, like he's saying that women, we typically do this. Yeah. We just want reassurance for whatever reason. We feel a, feeling a little insecure for whatever reason. Y'all crazy. <laughs> and and we just want to hear it. Do we you just... love me, baby? <laughs> tell you I love you every day. You don't. Not every day. You tell me, uh, you know, you tell me plenty, right? Mm-hmm. But not but every day. I don't day. tell you I love you every day. No, you don't okay, tell me you love I gotta me. add that to the repertoire. No, I didn't say you <laughs> I didn't say you had to add that to the repertoire to tell me I mean, you love me every obviously day. Obviously there's days where you wanted some reassurance. Yeah. So that's getting added to the repertoire. Okay, well awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool, Jason. You're a good husband. <laughs> um and then he was talking about like, you know, it's a lot of pressure being a woman in the world. And I want you men to basically understand like you know it's just so much pressure to be beautiful and it's always these young beautiful girls on tv that i'm happy now that they're actually showing models that have like stretch marks and and you know stuff like that like they actually being showing um, real people yeah exactly but opposed to this small segment of the community right you know what i'm saying right it's like uh-uh. well i mean and then those women don't even look like that because they right. photoshop them right. right they actually do have stretch marks they just photoshop the stretch marks out right you know, or they put makeup on or something right or some of them up. don't have stretch marks but some of them do right and they just photoshopping that right? right right so um but you know it can it can you know there's so much it's, just, it's nothing to do with you it's just like what society has done to women sometimes yeah. we can feel a little you know oh I feel a little, I feel a little twing of insecurity. Is twing a word? I just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the, the main thing is, you know, for for you know, for me, you know, mm-hmm. I, I I'm love, I'm in love with your heart. I'm in love with your spirit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like your face is just who you are. You know mm-hmm. that your your face is gonna change. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Your body is gonna change, mm-hmm. and that's okay because. I want your spirit. I want your. I want. That's that's who I'm in love with. Oh, I love you too, honey. Just I'm just saying. <laughs> just describing my love. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's sometimes he was saying, giving an example of like when, he, but when if I'm watching you watch TV, right, and it's like you know I've done this before, where it's like a we watching a, a rated R movie and it's a woman that's butt naked or something. I do like that. <laughs> I was like, you don't need to be looking at that, you know. It's just some, it's just some breast and booty. <laughs> breast and booty. What's wrong? What's wrong with a little breast and booty here now. I don't know. It's just still. It's like I we not in that way. You know what I'm saying? If it's pornographic, then that that can cause issues. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you know, I guess that's technically. Yeah, you know, it is technically. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But I ain't looking at that like that. So okay, well, sometimes as women, we just you know we just like, geez, I wonder what's going on in my husband's head right now. You know what I mean? And sometimes we I don't need cover a- your eyes when the, when the men be walking around with their little booty cheeks hanging out. What what movie did we watch? Because clearly in movies, everybody knows that <laughs> women are naked all the time, and men are never naked. Game of Thrones, they was naked. And you acted so appalled, like it was like one scene. <laughs> 
Jason was mad. He was so mad. There was one scene where it was full frontal. Like, I, I didn't watch all of the seasons of Game of Thrones. Jason just, like, caught me up or something, right? Like, yeah. you watched all of them. But I was watching one episode, and it was, like, the full frontal nudity of a man. And Jason was like, come on, come on, man. <laughs> ah. I said, you're not saying all this with the butt-naked women running around. <laughs> you quiet over there. <laughs> Looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he was, was so mad. Yeah, they gotta give us a warning, man. Anybody <laughs> trying to see no dude? <laughs> so, so no, that's why you're not covering my eyes because it doesn't happen nearly as much with men as it does with women. But I didn't cover your eyes in that situation. It it happened so fast, and the scene was so quick. Now the woman, she's standing there for five minutes, butt naked. But this was like a ten second scene where he was like walking across the stream screen, and you see, you know, his. <laughs> <laughs> it was so quick you could have missed it if you blinked but women no every 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 game of thrones not episodes every, not every one of them not everyone Mm-mm. i can tell toward the end of this um the 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 series that people had got tired of all the nudity because they 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 calm down on the nudity uh, i think just the actress they they say you know what we ain't we doing do this that? no yeah, more you gotta pay us more than that no, I think they just said there's no purpose. There's no purpose for me to be naked right now. I think same thing happened in power. When it first come on, they do all that just to get people. It's like, oh, they be nudity. You know, <laughs> then everybody start watching it. And as the season progress, it gets, you know, less and less. Because yeah. I think they they demand more. Mm-hmm. Like, uh-uh. Well, I think they just decided. Same thing with uh, Westworld, too. Uh-huh. Same stuff. I guess in the beginning, it's just to get you, get all everybody's eyes on it. Yeah, because I mean, not we digressing all the way off, but so there was sorry. just one scene. I I think I looked it up too. There was one scene that was just horrible. I was like, this is absolutely ridiculous. You know, women were being sexually assaulted, and it was just like no reason, no reason for that at in, all. In the in the plot of the story, in, in the yes, like for that scene, like okay, you don't have to show the women being raped right. you know what i mean right like that's very offensive and it's just ridiculous there was like no reason for that yeah it was it was just ridiculous and it, and it went on for a very long time and i think i think i yeah i looked it up because i was very offended by that and yeah. and it was um i think a lot of people started saying something a- after that it's like that, that 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 episode was whack like yeah we don't need to what we need to see this for right. you know this is ridiculous. But anyway, so we digressing all the way to the <laughs> Bring it back. Bring it, bring it, bring it back. <laughs> um, so yes, you know, we talked about this. I mean, Jason and I kind of I'm okay. Like some women are not okay with understanding that their man finds another woman attractive. It just depends on how you act when you see this woman, I guess. Yeah. You know, be respectful or whatever. Yeah. I'm I don't believe that like I'm not in a like denial to say that oh Jason will never see an attractive woman, right? Right. And it's just all about how he behaves himself. Right. Right. But um if you were to, I don't know, look at her too long, now you're making me feel a certain way. Yeah. And actually you're probably gonna have to reassure me now. Yeah. Because of what you did. Right. Right. You you caused this. <laughs> <laughs> like a uh, baby boy, but well, she said, if I'm insecure, Jody, it's because you made me this way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it's just what it is. It's it's all types of people out here and some people are attractive and, you know, it is what it is, you know, mm-hmm. so you just got to, you know, act accordingly. You right. Know? It's all good. Right. Yeah. And you mentioned something about the divorce where, I mean, divorce and, and the author also went into that just a little bit. Um, he said, be sure to, to never bring up the D word, even if you're joking. The word divorce does not make your wife feel secure, no matter what the context. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's no way. Like, so we have never done that. I can say mm. that's something that we've never done. Right. Um, nobody wants to be with somebody. Every time we get into an argument, I'm going to divorce you. What kind of, you know what I mean? <laughs> but there is, there are people like that. Yeah. And they, like, they threaten to leave and threaten to, like, we going to get a divorce. Don't throw that around. That's not cool. Come get on down then. Get on out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't keep throwing it up there. Put your money where your mouth is. 
Well, it's just not. It's just not helping the relationship. No, nah, that's what I'm saying. If you're gonna keep opening up like that, you're trying to cut my head off every mm-hmm. time we have conflict. It's me and you versus a problem. You making it like it's you versus me and a problem. Well, if I'm the problem, then get out. Get out of here. <laughs> Scram. <laughs> Some people just don't know any better. Like yeah. some, especially because a lot of us came from uh, families that were divorced, right? Mm-hmm. Some people really struggle with this of like not reaching for that because you know it's like my parents got a divorce, or you know mm-hmm. it's just you know it just goes back to that um, idea of like really being committed. So that's what this is about. Yeah, you know, and some people struggle with that. With that, yeah, because it is you know this whole idea of oh divorce is not an option clearly it is right right like, people get divorced all the time right so it is an option <laughs> but even though that's my option I, I you want to know that your partner is choosing to stay with you they're choosing to be with you and they're not going to just give up you know when times get a little tough right you know mm-hmm. so yeah got anything else to say about that Mm-mm. all right here's another list for you she is assured of your loyalty when this is the way that you can show your uh your lady some loyalty. Number one. You speak highly of her in front of others. Okay. That's really nice. Yeah. Jason does that. Yeah. And that really does that that really does make me feel like you are very committed. Because yeah. you're just willing to tell everybody and oh, yeah. speak very highly of me. Do I speak highly of you? Hi, I mean, in, in public? Uh yeah, I would say so. But I was about <laughs> to ask the question, how do you know I speak highly? to other people when you're not around in front it didn't say when i'm not around it said in front of others it says you speak highly of her in front of others yeah 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 you 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 like i said ash is my biggest hater (laughs) and she's my biggest supporter (laughs) so uh i know the hate comes from love you know what i'm saying hate come from love that you're being you're being hated you're you're hating you're when you hate on me i'm just joking with you yeah it's just it's it's love you know what i'm saying it's like it's like when boys when they like a girl, they they punch her. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like that. That's like her little punch. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So yeah. So in that sense, you you hate on me publicly, but you always back it up with some love. So I see it as love, love. You know what I'm saying? Okay, great. I'm yeah. happy you feel that way. Yeah. If you didn't, I would totally try my best to not nah, do that anymore. That's, it's, it's, it's funny. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> you are involved in things important to her. You make you help her make decisions. you help her make decisions such as ones regarding the children jason is very good at this you don't correct her in front of the children Hmm. (laughs) i think we need to work on that a little bit huh i think we both do this yeah i mean is this such a bad thing because i guess it depends on what it is i've heard a lot of people say that like you know, they would see their parents, they never saw their parents, like, they saw their parents fight, but they didn't see them make up, maybe. Or maybe they never saw them fight, right? But it's like, it's actually, is it is it okay for your kids to see you fight? Not, it depends. Not fight. Have a disagreement? Definitely, I think it's okay. I think it's healthy. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Because so it know. shows problem solving. It shows that conflict arises even in the most people that, you know, these two people are the people that you adore the most. You think they are, they can't do no wrong, but Mm -hmm. (gasps) they can do wrong. And they apologize about it to each other and they fix it and they moved on. Yeah. So I think it's okay to like, you know, Jordan, she's, she, she's on it. You know what I'm saying? If she, if you do something that you shouldn't do, like, you know, anything, you know, leave the door open. You know, we tell you close that door, you're letting her out. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) If you leave that door open two seconds, uh, you need to close the door, daddy. And it's like, you know what? You're right. You know what I'm saying? Not not saying that she's bossing us or anything like that. But she's she holding just, us to the same standard. Holding us standard. accountable. Yeah. Exactly. What's wrong with that? Mm-hmm. So if you if you corrected me for something that I, I've done I shouldn't shouldn't do in this household, then it's like, well, what's the big deal? Now, now I guess maybe it comes to how big the infraction is. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So, but we're, we're talking about the contents. What we're talking about is some small things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Small things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You don't look lustfully at other women. If you do that, you know, just don't do it around. (laughs) 
Yeah, <laughs> you shouldn't do that. But yes, uh, there was some something that I skipped over just about like the biblical reasons of why you don't. I mean, not reasons, but it was just like a, a scripture. It's basically, you know, just don't do it. Just if you, if you're lusting after somebody, try not to. Just don't. Just go, you know, you know, just be lusting all over because it just it just puts that in you, you know. Yeah, I mean, and it's, it's probably gonna come out. It's it's, it's giving it's giving you it's growing inside of you. Right. You just continue to just looking at women all the time, lusting at them. Right. What, she, what is she like in bed? You know. Right. It's right. Just, Cause that's how the action start. You yes. know what I'm saying? With your thoughts. Yeah. So the, the forest is inside of a seat. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Forest is inside of a seat. Listen, show do Come. have all these. I'm just saying. What are these allegories? Or I don't what, know. Are, what are these called? The Lord. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord talking to you. He got so many parables. I'm just saying that what Jesus did. Okay. Come on. Can I break it down? Yes. Go ahead. All right. So uh, <laughs> the forest is inside of the seed, right? Mm-hmm. And the seed is small, but you know what I'm saying? Like you say, faith of a mustard seed is going to yes. grow into something bigger. Uh-huh. But so you got to watch out those little seeds. It, the action doesn't always, it, it doesn't, no really, no, no action almost doesn't start with the act of, right? Mm-hmm. It, it, it starts with a thought. You know what I'm saying? It starts with the thought. Premeditate it. So, yeah. So you gotta you gotta watch your your gates, your ears, your, 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 eyes. your eyes, your nose, I don't even know. But yeah, you gotta watch those things. <laughs> so if you lusting out of somebody, you got the burning mac eyes getting big looking, you know, <laughs> that's gonna that's you planting seeds inside of your heart or your self or your uh, self conscious. Or your mm-hmm. yeah, your self conscious, right? So uh so you gotta watch that. You know, it's gonna grow, it's gonna grow. Like you you saying, ah, I can do it, I'm good, whatever. It's gonna grow. You're designed to to do that. Right? Yeah. It's just what it is. So you gotta stop it. There was a to. phrase here that says, drink water from your own well means be faithful to your own wife. Mm, 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 drink mm. from your own well. Be trying to sip it from somebody else's <laughs> This is a love <laughs> podcast. I can't go too far with that. <laughs> <laughs> um he did i'm going back in here to to see this part about the lusting but uh he he was saying something about wedding rings too i, I accidentally skipped over this but you know make sure you guys check out this book for yourself right like we, you know i'm i'm not telling you the whole book there's there's lots of great information in right. here that i just can't cover so make sure you check it out right um but he was talking about how some men um, engage in sports and and they gain a few pounds over the years and their ring no longer fits. Put that ring out, okay? Get a get an enlarged. Purchase a new one. Purchase a new cheap one because he was talking about symbolisms. Is symbolism is very important to yeah. a woman and the ring is is a symbol of the commitment. Right. So why can't you just put the ring on? Right. So this uh, stood out to me because I do not wear my ring because. Yeah. I gained a few pounds having yeah. my second baby and it doesn't fit. I have asked Jason multiple times, does he want to um me to wear a ring? He wears his ring faithfully. He yeah. he wears it faithfully. Bling bling. <laughs> Every time I come around the city, bling bling. Um, but he was like, I don't care, you know. But For I, me, it's not a big deal. Right. But I think for women, this is like I would have a problem with you not wearing your ring. Probably so. Yeah. Yes, I would. Yeah. So I'm letting you know. So <laughs> it's all good, and I don't have a problem with wearing my ring. Yes, I don't. I don't have a problem at all. Mm-hmm. But for you, it's like you've been since 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 you since the last past two years. Isaiah's about to be two. Mm-hmm. You really haven't just really been out, out and about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like I, I've seen you try to put the ring on. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> why go through all that struggle and and pain to put this ring on? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but and it's like, come on. And I don't want to enlarge it because I plan on losing a few pounds. Right. Why why waste that extra bread? But I mean, as you start to go to the grocery store more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause with you know, with the pandemic and stuff, we got to kind of, you know, go to the grocery store more. Uh you do have guys kind of look at you yes. you know what i'm saying and they looking for that ring <laughs> yes <laughs> really they really a lot of times they don't even care anyways whether you got the ring or not yeah you know what i'm saying let's just keep it 100 mm-hmm. but if you don't have a ring it's like oh wow you yeah. know what i'm saying here i come you know what i'm saying so in that sense of really safety mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying because you know that may limit 
by having a ring, it may limit the interactions. Right, and that's and that's uh, that's what I was telling Jason. I was telling you that too because I'm I'm uncomfortable. I don't like um, because I don't want to just like assume that somebody is talking to me because they trying to get at me. Yeah. So you know I'm. I'm a nice, very nice person. So if somebody talked to me, I would talk to them back. Right. right. So, um, but yes, but it's just making me uncomfortable. So I'm like, well, if I have a ring on, then they know. Right. But like Jason said, they may not care if I'm being too nice and I have a ring on that ring don't mean nothing, you right. know, right. but I'm just a nice person, but I think it would deter some people. They can see the ring and they'll just go on about they, yeah. their business. So I, I'm going to buy something because just because of that reason of like, eh, like when I go to the grocery store at certain times where yeah. like when uh, certain times when a lot of people go to the grocery store, right. every time somebody like trying to talk to me or, you know, saying what's up, you know, I, I, you know <laughs> like, my thing is what do they do before rings? You huh? see what I'm saying? What do they do before rings? In other cultures, they don't wear rings. Right. You know, some people, they have a dot or they have different things. You know, they may have in Hawaii, they wear, you know, a flower in the other ear. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like. <laughs> That's not the right, but yeah. What? A flower in the other ear. Yeah, you didn't know that? What? Us? Oh, my God. So I thought you was wrong. No. Uh, I thought you were just making up something. No, not. Oh. Like in Hawaii. <laughs> shout out to all my people in Hawaii. <laughs> shout out to y'all. So, uh. Hawaii is so awesome. Uh, Hawaii, you got if I don't I forgot which ear it is, but one ear is, it represents your single. But they don't wear flowers all the time. Who in Hawaii? Yes, they do wear flowers we all the time. We were in Hawaii, Jason. I was there too. I mean, they don't wear it all like all the time. But yes. if you see a flower in a girl's ear, uh-huh. that that the ear lets you know what if they're single or if they're taken. Okay. I'm just saying. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Just the. the the side the two my thing is wear the ring in your heart you know what i'm saying yeah of course wear the ring in your heart i'm not who you know who cares about this uh you know uh, americanized system you know what i'm saying well we care in america i mean i get it but <laughs> I, I don't i don't i don't i don't too much care for it i don't care about it so you why do you wear saying? your ring i wear it because i like it <laughs> That's what it is. I like it. I like the ring. It so it has it nothing to do with the way I feel about it. I mean, I I think no, nah, I don't think so. I think <laughs> oh my God. no, I don't think so. I think I think I like wearing the ring. I like the ring. I like it. You know what I'm saying? I you know, I know that if I take it off, that that you maybe feel some type of way. Maybe mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But I never that really never really crossed my mind because I don't I don't I don't I don't want to take it off. You know what I'm saying? When mm-hmm. I took when I first put it on, I was like, man, this feels weird. You know what I'm saying? When I first got married, but after that, I just grown to like it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just what it is. Mm-hmm. I just like it. Well, I'm happy you like it. We don't have to have this discussion or argument yeah. about you wearing your ring. And you know, guys who you know, some men, right? They work in like maybe like a construction job or something and they shouldn't have rings shouldn't on. Have it on. Uh maybe they wear it in a necklace. Yeah, you have a little necklace like in the that. military. We we take it take the ring off when we fly. Yeah. Whatever, put it around our dog tags. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh but you can also have like rubber rings. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you know, like I said, that's an it's it's, it's an American thing. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But other countries, other civilizations, you don't have to wear a ring. Well I would say if it's important to your wife, then you should. Yeah. Yes. Leave it at that. Leave it at that. <laughs> Moving right along. Let's figure it out. What was the rest of the ways that you can show your wife that you are, uh, what are we talking about? Loyal. Yes. Um, you include her in social gatherings when others may leave their spouse's home. You better include me. This, who has a problem with this? You are never critical of her or your children in front of others. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know I'm, if it's critical but it's like i don't know it's like i don't know i don't know critical i, I think, think i think you've we? done it before yeah have you, you i'm sure i have yeah don't tell the kids don't speak to your mother that way oh, yeah. oh no wait hell you tell the kids don't speak to your mother that way oh, yeah we definitely do that oh yeah we hey we we type <laughs> we type <laughs> kids <laughs> <laughs> you call and let her know your plans you keep commitments you speak positive, positively of her and the children at all times. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah, I think that's a good that's a good good set of rules. Oh, yeah. Okay, last but not least, esteem, the E in couple. Okay, esteem. 
just helping us, um, you know, understand that we are number one. We want to feel like we are the most important thing to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, God has made women so that they want to be ex- esteemed, honored, and respected. The way to honor your wife, as well as to honor your covenant with God, is to treasure her. Yeah. Yes, just treasure me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he says that your wife does not want to chair the relationship, but she does want to be first in importance to you. Your wife wants you to know that you have her on your mind and heart first and foremost. This is what I mean by esteem. When it's there, your wife will feel treasured. If she is the most, most loved woman. Oh, oh my gosh. As if she's the most loved woman on earth. Mm Mm-hmm. Remember that your love motivates her respect and her respect motivates your love. Yep. Yep. So it's just a supercharge. Just. (laughs) (laughs) So our, you know, women, I feel like our life can be like way more complicated than men, but maybe that's just something that I say. I don't know. But, you know, sometimes our esteem can even drop a little bit when we Mm. become mothers and we feel like we're failing. We're very hard on ourselves. We want to be a good mother. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, this is the job. This is the most important job, I guess. And it's like to us, a lot of us. And so, you know, sometimes that can even um, affect your wife. Mm -hmm. So recognizing that, you know, I'm taking care of your kids, right? (laughs) Our kids. Your kids too. I'm about to say your kids too. (laughs) But as a husband, I really would like for you to tell me that I'm doing a good job with the kids. I'm being a good mother. Even if there's some things that I need to work on, right? right. You're still doing a good job. Right. You know, so being able to, for men, you have to understand like the importance of this. And if your wife is struggling, man, come on, jump in. Give a pep talk. Give right. a pep talk, right? Right. What kind of pep talk would you give me, Jason? Uh, I will just say simple. Just, hey, you're doing a great job with the kids, man. You're an awesome mother. You're doing a Awesome job. You got all this stuff. You balancing out. I don't know how you do it, but you doing it. So shout out to, to Ashley. <laughs> doing a good job. Uh-oh. Damn, my fault. <laughs> <laughs> the well, Jason, again, you know, you do a great job at this. You tell me all the time how much you appreciate me, mm. um, what a good mother I am. So, I mean, I don't I don't even know if there's too many times that I have this feeling. I definitely have during my five years of being a mother mm-hmm. um, that I felt like I was feeling at something. And, you know, you did a good job. But just and, you know, hey, it's all good. You know, you're doing right. a great job. Right? right. You know, like I said, we put a lot of a, little, a lot of pressure on ourselves. Right. Especially with the mother. Mother's thing. OK, so here's a funny one. Does does your wife ever want you to read her mind? Is the question. Here's so here's what he's talking about. Yes. When? You wanted me to read your mind sometimes. What? What are you talking about? You just want things to kind of. You just kind of want things. Sometimes y'all just want things to just kind of flow. You know, especially when it's especially getting something to eat. That's exactly yeah. the example. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys, and it's so funny because I've seen so many like videos. Uh, memes about this now like this is such a common thing so your husband asks you what do you want to eat and you say i don't care and then he said bet i'm about to go get you know some pizza uh, so what did he say what was that burger place um red robin you know yeah. red robin you know what i mean uh i don't want that right okay well i'm getting some Popeye's. i don't want that i'm on a diet but didn't you just tell me you didn't care right Jason, you guys, our first year of marriage or our first year actually being together, uh, married because I was deployed, you know, for the first year. But when we finally got together and we're living together and we having this conversation about what I wanted to eat, Jason would get so mad. (laughs) He would get so upset about me, not about him asking me that like this situation happened multiple times. What do you want to eat? And I say, I don't care. And then he started naming pizza. I just, we just had pizza yesterday. No, like, I don't, I don't <laughs> be yesterday. <laughs> be yesterday. I don't want pizza. Oh, okay. Well, I'm about to go get this. I don't like that. You know, that's what I'm saying. What it, this is what it is. And this is what this man says in this book. And I, and I never had a age old question. I never understood. It's not that we want you to read our minds. 
I think that women, we observe you guys. We think about what you want. We learn what you want and what you don't like. And then we know how to order your food. We know what to do. So I think that it's it's about like, we want you to understand like by now, I've told Jason this before, like by now you don't know, you don't know what I want. Some things he does know, right? But it's like, I can order your food, right? I can go and swing someplace and decide that I'm going to bring something home. I can order your food too. By now, yes. But then you just, whether you like it or not, that's on you. We had to go through a lot of arguments for you to understand that I don't want to eat pizza every day. So if you say, like, if I'm asking you to go get dinner, I don't want pizza today because we had it yesterday. I don't feel like thinking don't, about you, it. You're using it wrong. Ain't nobody Jason, just, no, for real. Ain't nobody <laughs> ordering pizza back to back, babe. You did. He did. Yes. Hey, come on. Yes. <laughs> I, I remember what I used to do. And we used to, especially when we used to drive, you know, driving places, you know, going here and going there. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to keep asking you what you want. I'm going to say, hey, let me know when you're hungry. I'm just going to keep driving straight. If you see something you like, we can pull over there. So that's how I fix it. <laughs> but this is what this is about, fellas. We kind of, we want you. Oh, he gave a perfect example of what you should do when if you're in this situation. He says, okay, how about you name like a couple of restaurants, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what I told you to do. Give me some options yeah. because I can't trust that you're going to make the first, like the first choice. I can't trust that that's going to be actually what I want. Right. Yeah. So just give me some options and then I can choose from those. Yeah. But I, I still want you to make a educated guess. You know what I'm saying? Based on what you know about me. Don't you know me? Based on what you know about me, make an educated guess. I guess, man. <laughs> Just give us some parameters. Well, I guess we don't be thinking of food like that. I'm type of person. I'm not thinking of the food like that. So it's like I just get whatever. Mm-hmm. Now I've gotten better. You know what I'm saying? Because I guess my palate has expanded. But <laughs> it sure has. Other Jason. than that, it's like I don't care. <laughs> I'm not treating you any different differently than I treat myself. So what kind of restaurant do I like, Jason? I mean, you like you know you like your pastas. You like your chicken. You know what I'm saying? You like veggies. You know yes. what I'm saying? You like... Do I like a place that's got, like, live music or, you yeah. know, I, I, is ambiance important to me? Yeah, I think so. Especially if we sitting down to eat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't like stuff, pe- places that's too stuffy. <laughs> I guess not. I mean, it just depends on the food. Is no, the I food, don't like places that's too stuffy. If the food's good. Nah. If it's banging. I, I, I prefer right. a, a restaurant with an ambiance that's kind of laid back, which we can find plenty of those in LA mm-hmm. that still got upscale food, but we kind of, but everybody kind of chilling yeah. and the ambiance is, you know, good. Yeah. That's what I like. I don't yeah. like these, ugh, you know, I don't like that. Like, what, what, what is like that? Stuffy. stuffy. What's, what's that? What, did, what Give me an example of a restaurant that's stuffy. <laughs> Just so ex- stuck up or? Yes. Just so expensive. You oh, give me this okay. that you give me this much food. Oh no. And no. and everybody's just so prim and proper. Oh, okay. No, I I ain't know what you was talking about. I thought you were like crowded or oh, something. Oh stuffy? stuffy? Oh, okay. Yeah, like it stinks or something. Oh no, no. Prim yeah. and proper. Okay. So prim and proper okay. that we can't just like laugh a little loud. You know oh, what no. I mean? Yeah, we you know, we'll waste our time with that. Right. I don't like that. Yeah. So Okay, so Here's the last thing. Thank her for all she does. Kind of going back to the thing that we were just talking about. Hey, man, take some time to thank her. She gave some, uh, I think maybe it was the last uh, portion where he gave an example of a man coming home from work Mm -hmm. and like there's stuff everywhere, toys everywhere, dishes all in the sink. The kids are running wild and his wife is in home in the bed. Right. And he, and she said, he says, Hey, like what, what's going on? And she said, she woke up. And said, well, you know how you, you asked me, what do I do all day? And he was like, yeah. He said, well, I didn't do it, basically. <laughs> so this is what happens when I don't do what, what you do. what you asking me. Why are you asking me, what do I do all day? You know what I mean? Right. Let me show you what I do all day. Let right. me not do it and let, let you see how this house looks when right. you come home. Right. So I think that's a good good plan, ladies. Yeah. 
Maybe. That's a good plan. <laughs> When I was in the Navy, one of my chiefs told me that that his wife did that exact same thing. Yeah. He, he, he asked her, what do you do all day? You don't do anything all day. And he said she for like three days, she didn't do anything but take care of her daughter. She did. So she's still doing something. But she didn't clean nothing. She didn't she didn't cook nothing. She she fed the baby right. but, and herself, but she didn't do nothing for him. Just left the dishes, just didn't do nothing. Yeah. He said he never said that again. <laughs> he said, it taught him. Got him real, got him right real fast. Came with some flowers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there you go. Sometimes you got to show these guys. Sometimes you do. Ladies too, though. It ain't always the guys. <laughs> it's guys that's doing all that and the ladies don't don't appreciate it. Right. It's some, it's, some, it's some ladies out there that's like that. Yeah. So hold on. Yeah. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what, you, you, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Last, uh, Jason has never done that to me. Lastly, let's go through this list real quick. You say these are these are ways that you can show you esteem your wife. Okay, make your wife feel esteemed. Mm. You say I'm proud of you. Of the, no, I'm proud. I'm so proud of the way you handled that. You speak highly of her in front of others. You open the door for her. I'm oh, yes, open the door for me. Yeah. Um, you try something new with her. You give her encouragement or praise with kindness and enthusiasm. You notice something different about her hair or clothes. You are physically affectionate with her in public. Gosh, Jason is just always affectionate. I kiss on but you. I love it. I'm not groping you. I love it, honey. You have before. You, te- <laughs> you teach the children. You to have sh- too. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you teach the children to show her and others respect. You value her opinion in gray areas as not wrong, but just different and valid. Okay. You choose family outings over guy things. You make her feel first in importance. You are proud of her and all she does. For sure. That's it. Make sure y'all tune in next week, the next two weeks, because now we're going to talk about what the women can do. For sure. Y'all make sure y'all tune in uh, to that. But I do want to give a shout out to our VIP Glamoury.com. So make sure you check them out. We got the promo code right here at the bottom of the screen. Go to Glamoury.com. They have some awesome clothes and all that good stuff for the ladies out there. All right. And so I want to give a shout out to our uh, top countries. Mm -hmm. Uh, United States is being one, obviously. Uh, India coming in second. And then we have Kuwait, which is a new top country. Kuwait, shout out to Kuwait, hey, Kuwait. for being a top country. So top out, shout out to our top countries out there, man. Appreciate y'all, appreciate y'all, appreciate y'all. And the top states in the United States, we're going to give it up to California. Mm-hmm. Knows how to party. <laughs> so California, we have Texas, and then we also have Ohio. So appreciate. I it was Nevada. No. I'm oh, sorry. Let's double check real quick. <laughs> I could just want to. Why he looks that up? We were on the relationship oh, I'm charts. Sorry. Oh, uh, it's, it's California, Texas, and Arizona. And Arizona. My awesome. Fault, Arizona. You was close, though. Yeah. You was close in Nevada, Arizona. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No desert. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we were on the relationship uh, charts in Ireland, mm-hmm. UAE. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, uh, what brought up the Kuwait, Kuwait. situation. Yeah. yeah. What was the other place? Uh-huh. I don't know, but shout out to Ireland and UAE. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. So again, man, thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of the Love Ozzy Podcast. If you like what you hear, hit that like, hit that comment, whatever. Share this thing with some other people. Even if you already know some of this stuff, you never know somebody may not know it and they can use this information. Mm-hmm. Ain't that right, love? Always. All right. Well, guess what? We're going to catch y'all next time. So until next time, peace out. Bye. Bye. <laughs>